What's shaking, baby? All just cracking them out. Cracking out what? Shakes, man. Some of us may call them shingles. This is made from wood instead of slate, tile, or asphalt like most structures have today. Huh. Hello, I'm Ranger Lee. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park offers the Mountain Life Festival here on our Mountain Farm Museum. This year, we're bringing the festival to you through a series of videos. Michael and I were talking about making shakes or shingles just like these. Sometimes they need to be replaced just like our modern structures today. Roofs were covered by thin overlapping pieces of wood that were made using a fro and mallet. This was often done when outdoor work was limited by storms and a barn offered a dry workspace. Wood turning and woodworking was very important to mountain living during the late 1800s and the early 1900s. Woodworking allowed an individual farmer to make and replace handles for tools, yokes for draft animals, build household furniture, and create utensils like spoons and bowls necessary in the kitchen. It took a trained eye to recognize useful parts or pieces of wood as you began to split it. Wood not used for creating or repairing items on the farm was not discarded, but instead become kindling or firewood. Since families used firewood for heating as well as for cooking, it was consumed twice as fast through the winter. As people do today in some areas, chopping wood was a year-round activity. A cord of wood is four feet wide by four feet high by eight feet long. A family may need as much as 40 cords of wood to heat and cook with. With little to no growing season in the winter, a family's food storage needed to be adequate for the family size. Gardens were planned over the winter for planting as early as possible using signs like the moon and nature. The family garden was large and started with early producers, especially leafy greens such as cabbage, mustard, and rhubarb. Plants for summer growing may include several varieties of beans such as scarlet runner or the mountain half runner. Also grown are squash, potatoes, beets, possibly carrots, and turnips. The goal was to produce items that could be dried, brined, pickled, or covered in straw in the spring house. People saved their seed from their garden produce to be sure to plant next year's crop. This was something learned from generation to generation. Today, it is a re-emerging skill by home gardeners. Heirloom seed companies are available online. Here on our Mountain Farm Museum, we save seeds from year to year as earlier farmers had done. Keeping families fed was critical, but so was feeding the livestock. Hogs roamed in the forest through the summer months with families using ear notches to identify their animals. Each fall, hogs were gathered and placed in pens to fatten. Hogs were butchered after the first killer frost and salted to preserve the meat for the winter. If corn was king of the farm, feeding people and animals, the hog was the close second, providing the family with meat for the next year. Other livestock to be cared for were draft animals, such as oxen or horses, sheep, maybe even a cow, and chickens, which could provide meat, but even more important, eggs. Often, when a family chose a home site, the barn was built to house the animals before the home was built for the family. There are many jobs on a farm to be completed daily or by a specific season. Plowing, for example, would have been done in the early spring. Hoeing and weeding are constant chores on a farm for children. If you would ask some of our demonstrators or volunteers, they may tell you that the most harvested items on a farm were weeds and stones. Showcased here are only a sampling of what was done on a southern Appalachian farm. At the next Mountain Life Festival, 
keep your eyes open for the haystack or our pile of wood that was completed earlier in the season. Overall, we are constantly striving for more efficiency and managing issues that arise with new methods of heating, farming, and livestock production. As technology has advanced, many family farms have been replaced with large-scale manufacturing and agriculture. Yet these are the same concerns Southern Appalachian or small farmers dealt with in the past. One day, our current methods may be demonstrated as the old way of doing things, just as we are showcasing the skills we used in our past. As people today strive to move closer to the earth, having home gardens or backyard chickens for eggs, they take the best of the past with the best practices of today and keep moving forward. If you would like more information on this topic, search the web for your local county cooperative extension office. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode or check out our previous episodes by clicking the link. We are glad you joined us today and hope to see you on the third Saturday of September for our next Mountain Life Festival.